the Fibber, McGee, and Molly Show. Every weekday at this time, NBC brings you Fibber, McGee, and Molly transcribed. The show is written by Phil Leslie and Ralph Goodman and directed by Max Hutto. We'll join Fibber and Molly in just a moment. In less than ten years, a lot of fortunate people will see their savings pay off. You can be one of those people, but you have to act now. Invest today in United States savings bonds. In less than ten years, your bonds will mature, and Uncle Sam will pay you $4 for every $3 you put in. In other words, for an investment of only $18.75, you'll get back $25. For an investment of $750, you'll get back $1,000. And look, now you can hold your savings bonds beyond maturity and earn even more money. The handsome rate of interest continues up to 10 years beyond the maturity date. That's right, your bond. Earning 3% interest compounded semi-annually for their entire life. Investigate the payroll savings plan where you work or the bond-a-month plan where you bank. You'll feel more secure tomorrow if you invest in United States savings bonds today. Dinner is over, the table is cleared, and here in the kitchen, Mr. and Mrs. McGee are busy with the dishes. Mrs. McGee is busy washing the plates. Mr. McGee is busy emptying a bowl of candy. A piece at a time, as his wife says. Don't eat any more, but please. Okay. That's for the children tomorrow, anyway. Children? Tomorrow night. Halloween. Hey, that's right. It is Halloween tomorrow, isn't it? Sure. All the kids in the block will be ringing the doorbell and hollering, trick or treat, and I'll be ready for them. Trick or treat. My gosh, Halloween sure is quiet nowadays compared to what it was when I was a kid back in Peoria. Yes, thank goodness. Oh, boy, when I think of the stuff us kids used to do in them days. I used to hear about it. Yeah. My folks wouldn't let me get very far from home on Halloween. There was a terrible bunch of rowdies that used to roam the town. I'll say. You remember the night them rowdies put roller skates on the cast iron deer on the mayor's lawn and pushed it out into the street? Indeed, I do. And one kid rode it down the 7th Street Hill across Main Street and right through the window of Clip Stratton's barber shop. What a <laughs> shamble. I remember that very well. You smelt like bay rum for a week. Me? <laughs> oh, well, you know how kids are. I was only about 26 at the time. <laughs> I guess the Halloween I remember best was when poor Uncle Dennis was living at our house. Oh, yeah. And some kids took a bronze bust of General Grant off the courthouse lawn and put it on our front porch. And boy, was that heavy, too. Uncle Dennis came home so tired he could hardly stand up. He came in about midnight with his knuckles all bruised. Oh. Said he had an argument out front with a Civil War veteran and had to poke him in the nose. (laughs) Ah, boy, those were the days. Yes. Thank goodness they're over. I guess kids nowadays... What's the matter? Listen. You hear something? You, You hear that? On the back porch. McGee, that's teeny. Oh. Her mother called and said she's coming over here to show us her Halloween costume. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look. Look out the door. <laughs> she's dressed like a ghost and got a Frankenstein mask on. Be real scared now, McGee. Yeah. Be scared. Who's out there? Frankenstein's ghost. Oh. Hey, help! Help! Don't get us! Please, Don't get... please now, spare us, Mr. Ghost. Please. Hey, we give up. We give up. <laughs> it's me, Mr. McGee. Oh. Miss McGee. See, it's me, Teeny. Oh, boy, what a relief. <laughs> you scared me to death. Oh, me too. Have some candy, Teeny. Thanks, Miss McGee. I'll just take one pocket full. <laughs> I scared you, huh? Yeah, we, we were just talking about Halloween, Jeannie. You going out with the kids tomorrow night? Well, my mother won't let me go with the other kids because they always get in trouble. Oh? Mm-hmm. Like Willie Toops has got a whole lot of soap, and he's going to ride all over the schoolhouse, 
And Terry Martinez, he knows where he can swipe a goat. Well, and... now, your mother is absolutely right, Teeny. Yeah, but gee, mister, I like to have fun. Hey, I tell you what, sis. I'll take you out trick-or-treat myself for a while. Right tonight. Gee, would you, Mr. McGee, would you? Oh, boy. Why, sure. McGee, aren't you a little, uh, <laughs> well, mature to go around ringing doorbell? One is never too old, my dear, to bring a little joy to the heart of a little child. Oh. I'll run and get a false face out of my old Taylor vaudeville trunk and a sack to carry the candy in, sis. Ah, this will be good, clean fun. <laughs> Back to Wistful Vista in a minute. Most of us have been called away from home and loved ones at one time or another, and we know from the experience that there's nothing quite as important during those days of separation as mail. A good old letter from home. Any man or woman in the armed forces will tell you, the only call that takes precedence over mess is mail call. And when a letter is more important to a hungry G.I. than food, you know it means something. The truce in Korea doesn't mean we should stop writing letters to our men and women in service, whether in U.S. camps or overseas. Mail from home is just as important now as it ever was. Yes, in some respects, it's even more important. The action, the strain, the anxieties of war can keep a soldier's mind occupied. But when the letdown comes, the time to relax, that's when morale needs a shot in the arm. Your soldier knows the shooting is over. He's done his big job, and now he wants to get home. But unfortunately, there's still a lot to keep him for a while. So don't let him down. Write that letter today. Gee, this is wonderful of you to take me, Mr. McGee. <laughs> Boy, we'll have fun, I bet you. Uh, well, we'll just ring some doorbells, trick-or-treat, holler, boo at people, stuff like that. No no destructive stuff, of course. None of that. Oh, no. No, Mr. McGee. Why don't you go ring a doorbell right here? Okay. This is Mr. Howell's house. He'll give us some candy, I bet you, and then we'll go to every house on the block. Hey, can you open the gate for me, Mr. McGee? You know how to open Mr. Howell's gate? Oh, sure. I'll wait out here, sis. You run on up and ring the doorbell. You look scary, all right. <laughs> okay, mister. <laughs> Boy, I bet I scare him. Hmm. This gate ain't fastened on to the hinges very tight. Oh, boy. If I was Teeny Jays, I'd have this thing off of here and up in that maple tree before... <laughs> oh, well, my goodness. What do you know about that? Lifted right off the hinges, didn't it? Oh, boy. Old Hector Howell will be as sore as a boil tomorrow when he... There's just... nobody oh. home, Mr. McGee. Oh. I rang the bell. Hey, what you doing to the gate, mister? Hmm, the gate. Oh, well, uh, well, well, it's a funny thing, Teeny. I, I was just opening this gate, and, and it come right off the hinges. <laughs> Imagine that. Lifted right off. Oh, gee, mister, we better fix it, huh? We don't want to be bad kids, do we? Oh, no, not us. I think it's busted, though. We better take it down the street and leave it on old man Parker's front porch. You know, he, he he's he's the carpenter around here. He's the one Howell will have to take to to get it fixed anyhow. Oh, what you doing? I fixed it, Mr. McGee. Oh. Mm-hmm. It just slips off of those little iron pegs. Uh -huh. I saw Mr. Howell take it off when they brought their refrigerator in one time. I fixed it. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Well, come on. Let's go. Whose house we go to next, Mr. McGee? Hmm. Well, here. Let's cut through this alley here to the next street. Okay, huh? okay. Just look at all the trash cans lined up down this alley, will you? They oughtn't to leave those trash cans out here. Kids might steal them, hmm? Yeah. Some kids would... <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, Teeny. I accidentally kicked that trash can right over. Well, gee, mister, maybe we ought to pick up the trash and put it back. Oh, no, sir. Quiet, Teeny. We didn't mean to do it, mister. We'll pick Quiet, up... Quiet, sister. What's going on out there? Elma, get me my flashlight. Come on, Teeny, we better run. Wait for me, mister. Hey, hey, come here, you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize 
realize how clumsy I was, Teeny. I got to running too close to the fence long there, I guess. I must have knocked over five or six of them trash cans, I guess. <laughs> nah, that's too bad. Accidents will happen, though. <laughs> See, that was fun, though, Mr. McGee. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm going with Danny here, Belle. She always gives me candy, I bet you. You want to come with me, hmm? No, no, I'll wait out here. This uh, this house next door, that's that's Toops's house, huh? Sure. I'm not so mad, though, mister. Oh? I'm mad at Willie Toops today. Oh, well, it's pretty dark out here, but I see Mort leaves his car in the driveway. <laughs> he shouldn't do that. No. Why don't you go tell him you ought to put it away, mister? Go tell him. Oh, no, no. He, he, he'll know it in the morning, sis. <laughs> You go ahead and scare the people next door. Don't hurry. I'll I'll amuse myself waiting here. Okay, mister. Boy, I'll scare Mrs. Dunhill and then I'll say, It's me, Teeny. And she'll say, Come in, Teeny. Old Mort should not leave his car out like this. <laughs> Boy, if I was Teeny's age, I'd take a piece of soap and ride all over the windshield. What did I do with that soap I had? Oh, here it is. <laughs> I'd take this piece of soap and I'd write, Mort Toops is a, a stinker. Boy, wait till he comes out in the morning, he'll blow his top. Hey, Molly. I'm home. Good. Did you and Teeny have fun, dearie? Oh, she had a wonderful time. Want some candy bars? We split it up. Oh, no thank you. I hope you showed the youngster how to be well-behaved and stay out of mischief. Well, Natch, you know I'd set her a good example. There were some other youngsters out tonight, too. Oh, sure. I wish you'd have had them with you so you could watch them. Yeah? I didn't see anybody else. Over near Toops' house. Oh, I took the car and ran over to Mabel Toops's for a while to pick up a dress pattern and some things, and naturally, I just parked our car in their driveway. Our car? In Toops's driveway? And some little rascals came along and rode all over it with some soap. It's just a mess. My gosh, the nasty little vandals. They must have thought it was Mort's car. It says Mort Toops is a stinker all over it. Isn't that terrible? I'll have it washed in the morning. Don't worry about it. Tibber and Molly will be right back. With Halloween only a day away, the Trick or Treat Brigade is already on the prowl through the fall night. And after you've answered your doorbell a few times, you'll know that fall is here in its full glory. And for the sports-minded, fall is synonymous with college football. The cheering crowds, brightly colored mums, and the crisp air of a Saturday afternoon truly mean football. And if you can't be there in person, be sure to join us here by your radio as the NBC Radio Network again brings you the top football game of the week. From the kickoff to the final gun, you'll hear each and every play when you set your dial to NBC Radio these fall Saturdays. So make it your habit to tune to the top football game of the week on the NBC Radio Network tomorrow and every Saturday afternoon. Later Saturday evening, you'll want to hear NBC's Folk Festival of Top Western Entertainers. Listen for such fun-packed shows as Grand Old Opry, the Eddie Arnold Show, and Pee Wee King Show. There's fun for everybody when you set your dial to this, your NBC station, every Saturday evening. Well, tomorrow night is Halloween, and when the little spooks and goblins and the dime store false faces and the bed sheets knock on your door, be nice to them. Yeah. Remember that we were that age once. Yeah, and I don't know about you people, but some of the stuff I got into at that age, I'm lucky I didn't get killed. It's a wonder I ever grew up. Did you? What? Huh? Oh, <laughs> good night. Good night, all. <laughs> NBC has brought you the Fibber McGee and Molly program transcribed. Be with us again Monday night for another visit with Fibber McGee and Molly.
Laugh with Can You Top This on the NBC Radio Network.